Christ is my opinion about you. So if you want to know about yourself, study Christ. You are not studying Christ. Christ is not just a savior. He's not just our Lord to follow. He is our life. He is at the design of our life. And it is written in the Bible, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. He said, when Christ, who is your real and true life and identity, is revealed, it shall be your revelation. So the revelation of Christ is the revelation of man. Because Christ is actually the perfect copy or the original copy which we, we, we must put to copy our identity from. So he is the life in us. He's not just our my savior, he is my life, literally. He is my life. And this the, 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 so, the, 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 so so people will tell you a hey, man does not need salvation. Actually, the salvation that of man, when Jesus Christ came to save us, he came to save us from sin. But what was the sin? The sin there is Hamatia, not Paraptoma. What is Hamasia? Hamasia is the recognition of division, the recognition of separation, and the recognition of dualism. So it is that false sense that we are separated from God. Christ came to save us from that false sense of separation by becoming a man. So the moment he became flesh, that was when our salvation. And it is not Christians that are saved. He records, he saved the entire human race. Even those who are practicing terrorism, even the terrorists, the Muslims, there is Christ in a hidden form in them. Everybody has Christ in them. Even the Muslims have Christ in them. And let me tell you something, when they die, they are not going to hell. No, they are not going to hell. When they die, they are ascending to the place of glory and they shall be taught the ethics of life since they didn't know it on earth. They shall be taught who they are and they shall awaken even while they enter into that realm. So Christ came to save us from the false sense that we are separated from God. So he came to heal our mind and to reveal to us that oneness can never be tempered with. Oneness has never been undermined. We have never been separate from God. In short, the moment anything is separate from God, at that second you cease to exist. It's not possible that you are separate from God. If you are separate from God, you see to exist because He is the breath in you, He is the life in you. Uh, I have my own personal definition of the word Yahweh because at times I used to study etymology. etymology. Now, Yahweh is a natural name that is not just for, it's not a Christian name, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a name that was found among the ancients. Now, what was Yahweh? It was one of the most holiest and sacred names that the Jews and the Aramaics were afraid to mention. You dare not mention. It. So, because when they were talking about the spirit, they say, well, you cannot identify the spirit. You cannot define the spirit. And since you cannot define him, you cannot name him. And how do you worship something you cannot name? Because it was spirit. So he was ubiquitous. He was everything. Just like Salim used to teach us. He was the all in all. He is everything and everything is him. He is everywhere and everywhere is him. Then how do you identify, define, and name such a being that has no precedence? That has no boundary, that has no limitation. So the now said, well, the only way we can worship him with, with, without risking the rot of that God by calling his name is to actually then the, the, if you notice in the in the Hebrew letters and the Hebrew words, the name that was given to God is the only name you pronounce without the use of your tongue. You pronounce you, you pronounce the name without your tongue involved because they believe that if your tongue was to be involved in it, it's a blasphemy and you will die. So how was the name provided? Originally it was not Yahweh. It was a depiction of breathing in and breathing out. So Yahweh means what? Yahweh. Yahweh. That was what worship was. The worship was not singing Hallelujah. No, it was not worship. Worship was the, the, the act of breathing in and breathing out was the name of God. You said, so when he when he breathed into into man, he said he put his name and himself into man because when he breathed out, man breathed in the breath of God, and when man breathed in and breathed out, man became the reflection of Yahweh. So Yahweh is an act of breathing. It was the highest name of God. As people kept over the years, it started, the people started pronouncing it Yahweh, Yahweh. But initially, it was what a description, an action of breathing in and breathing out because he is the breath of life. So you understand what I'm saying? So at the same time, if you look at the Bible, the Bible is not the word of God. This is a pastor talking to you. The Bible is not the word of God. The Bible contains the word of God, but it is not the word of God. Because in your 
six books. Devil spoke and it was written. Occult men spoke and it was written there. Rapist spoke and it was written there. And also the Christ also spoke and it was written. So when you are reading the Bible, you must find the voice of God. And what is the voice of God in the Bible? It is a voice of unity, the voice of oneness, and the voice of love. Anything that reminds you that you are loved, that you are one with God, you are united, it is the voice of God in the Bible. But the Bible contains even the voice of the devil. The devil spoke and it was written. So when somebody says, the Bible is the word of God. No, the Bible is not. It's not. Even when Jesus came, Paul says that everything that was written is a shadow and a symbol and that it has no life to give. It was a pointer to the spirit, which was Christ. And who is Christ? Our original identity. The first impression in the mind of spirit that what brought about every creation. That was why I was telling us last time that I am beginning to believe strongly that Lucifer, the devil, is not Lucifer. And Lucifer is not the devil. That word Lucifer is too glorious to be given to a devil. I, the word Lucifer means what? The congregation of the morning stars. And it's not referring to one person. That was why when the spirit was asking Job, he said, ah, were you dear when the morning stars plural sank together? Yes. You know, I believe that the bright and morning star, because when Jesus came in the book of Revelation, it was a title that was also used for Christ. The bright and Lord, the bright morning star. And if we are in the class of Christ, then we are the original Lucifer of God. And Lucifer is not a bad, a bad thing. It means what the most brightest star in the sky. It's not a bad thing. And I believe very well that the cherub, what is the work of the cherub? The cherub, they, they, they are the throne of God. They are the custodians of the mystery of spirit. They reveal the glory of spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. If you go more in deeper into it, the word temple means means what? The throne of God. So we are the host of spirit. So we are the anointed cherubs and the seraphims. And the truth is that I saw something that happened recently. It doesn't make sense. I don't even want to share it yet. I had an experience whereby I was meditating. And while I was meditating, I was watching myself in the spirit. I was watching myself, and I noticed that when I was watching myself standing in the spirit, I was seeing my shadow. But my shadow had six wings. And my shadow was looking very fearful and terrible. But in the physical, I have two hands and two legs. But in the spirit, I was seeing my shadow like a monster and a beast. And it turned on me. We are not just mere mortals with two legs and two hands. We are a configuration of what an ancient technology that a, 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 a class of spirit that is not even we are not classified in the realm of the angelic. We are beyond the level of the angelic. We are in the God class. So basically, as a spirit being, when it comes to the new age, the church will tell you, don't do astral projection. It's a sin. It is pure rubbish. It is powder dash. Let me tell you something. The means of contacting spirit is the same. Whether in Buddhism, in Hindu, it is the same means. The, the important is that what spirit are you contacting? Are you contacting the spirit of anger? Are you contacting the spirit of evil or the spirit of love? Anything that you do that brings you into contact with love is accurate and is right. If God does not want us to disappear, he wouldn't give man the ability to disappear. It's not occultic, it's not juju, it's not sangoma. The sangoma are lesser. They are contacting elemental spirits, elemental angels, and we are higher than elemental angels. They are contacting just nature's fallen spirit. But we are, they are actually ignoring their identity and going after outside forces, external forces. You see? But we are not going after external forces. We are going after the internal force, the one and true God, the spirit of love, the spirit of life that is one with us, that is living within us, the one and true God, according to Salim. He's not in heaven. The servant Salim said that I love so much. He said that this God has no hidden agenda. He has no hidden motive. He is just pure spirit. And he says you can connect with him when your motive, you have a pure intention. That changed my life. I, I was telling you yesterday that suddenly everything made sense to me. He said, you know, at times you can know everything, yet you know nothing. You see, if you know about everything and you cannot bring it back together to form a particular picture, it's like you have the, the pieces of different puzzles and you are not able to solve the puzzle, you know nothing. But when I heard him, he says, a pure intention will connect spirit. It changed me instantly. A pure 
me away. So it, now, so what we are doing does not mean okay because of that it's okay. I am not a Christian anymore. No, it's not in what you bear or in the title you bear or not in the title you bear. It's you actually revealing a higher light to those who are working in darkness. Let's be honest with ourselves. Ninety-nine percent of this church today are not practicing Christianity. They are practicing a religion that has no name. More. Because if you go into history, this was not the practice. What we are doing and doing church is not Christianity. It's not, it's, it's not Christianity at all. And when you don't know it, you begin to attack Christians. They are not Christians. They are practicing something. It's a religion, but it is not Christianity. Because even if Paul was to come, he will not recognize them. He doesn't know them. If John was to come, he will not even recognize the Christians of the day. They are not Christians. It's just what it is. It, 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 it's a piracy. We are, they are pirates. The church today, the prayer, they are all pirates. They are just preaching something else. It is not Christianity. Authentic Christianity is the manifestation of union. There's something Salim said that blew me. He said, God's greatest desire is not to be worshipped, but to be expressed, to be revealed. He's not looking for you to worship him, but for you to reveal him. And that is the truth. Because he does not suffer from a low self-esteem. And he's, he's, not, he's not struggling to maintain his throne. So your worship does not add anything to him. You know, I, I was telling somebody today, I, I was in a meeting some days back, and the, the person who came to lead worship was like, okay, lift your hands, let's worship and bring God down. So when they gave me the mic, I told him, I said that you cannot bring God down. God is in me. I brought God to this meeting. You all are praying for your God to come. I brought him here. If you see me, you see your God. I brought God to this meeting. Your worship does not bring God down. There's something music and worship and meditation does. It helps us to re-establish connection with the reality that is already in us. It does not bring the reality down. Reality cannot be edited. Reality cannot be improved upon. It cannot increase. It cannot reduce. There are two things in the Indian concept. We call it what the Atman and the Brahman. The Atman is what the inward invisible reality, the principle that underlies the inward invisible reality, the principle that underlies every manifestation. Then the Brahman is what the, the, the outward manifestation of the inward reality. So what it means is that reality is constant. Everybody has, has the reality of Christ in them. Both Muslims, so even those blood suckers, the Sangomas, they have Christ in a hidden form, but they don't know him. They are in the darkness of ignorance with regard to the Christ that is in them. They are in the darkness of it. But in the, the what is an experience in the place of meditation, contemplation, prayer, worship, we are coming into an experience of the reality that we already are. We are already light, we are already glorified. But in the place of worship, our mind is, is going on a journey of discovery. So worship and prayer is a means of discovery, and just like Dr. Shira said, is a journey, is a journey of discovery, is a journey into the dimensions of the reality that is in us. So what I want to say is that what don't be afraid of astral projection because we need it as we approach this dark hour. A, a darkness is coming. It, it, Terrible thing is coming on the world, and we'll be, we will be able to we should be able to activate these abilities whereby there are times we need to fly literally like Superman. There are times we need to actually what disappear and enter into the ground. There are times we need to walk through us. There are times we have to shoot on us and the bullet will not enter. There are times we need to go to a place that is ravaged by famine, and we go through the technology of our spirit able to move 100 people without an aeroplane or transport them spiritually and biolocate them to another civil region. These are things that we'll be doing in these classes. So it is in our interest to learn it now. That's why I was like, I want Dr. Salim to focus more on the app because he has advanced so much in that area, more than most of us. So you teach us what are the technologies of meditation, contemplation, silence. How do we go deeper into this thing? How do we activate this thing? How do we do it? How long should we carry in it? Thank you very much. I think let me bring this thing to a home. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Wow. That was uh, something for real. It was something more than enough, and I appreciate it. Uh, you have uh, given the full insight. Eh? You have given the full insight for anyone in spirituality and anyone in religion. It was just plain, clear, and very well arranged one thing uh, which we I, first i want to add uh, there's something i want to just uh, clarify about what man is yeah? 
these mysteries and the stories and everything we have been hearing we have been hearing and uh, sometimes eh, we will say some other things are conspiracies this is the secret about conspiracies or this is the not conspiracies this is the secret secrets about anything that humanity perceives in the collective and our collective anything we can perceive exists in the universe anything you can think of exists in the universe if you cannot perceive of anything it does not exist in the universe as nothing exists outside of the universe so there are many conspiracies eh? and uh, when you, we come into we we look at the ancient scriptures the farist uh, religions or uh, or a spiritual movement you realize that uh, everything is given a different definition like the other time i was telling sheila that it is said that we are the stars we are the stars the stars which we see up in the sky we are the stars and if you are you are a star it means you are a solar system by itself there is life around it because uh, the craziest thing is that stars never move the same star which i viewed when i was in primary school is at the same position 30 years down the line and whatever we are we are we are, whatever we are we are we are uh, we are perceiving outside of us like yes we could be humanity as we are uh, this race and there are other races in other planets of billions and billions of planets but the grander truth is that we are not experiencing anything outside of us This is what you are, your physical senses perceive. This is what is being processed by your, bro, your brain. And that is what, you are, what your mind picks. And you work the puzzles and you create everything, the universe and everything. Half of the truth about what man is has never been told because man is a mystery unknown to man himself man is a mystery let me tell you the reason why we haven't find god yet and we are going jumping to every hole but this god is a mystery is becoming more mysterious is because man himself is a mystery man himself is a mystery because they have defined man in different aspects man like the star like if you are the star meaning that there is life around you which depends on you that and when we are told that you whatever you we are experience the hologram which we are experiencing outside of us is when we are told that it's not happening within us but it is our physical senses that send signals to our brains to process and our brains process and it pushes your higher mind to project that into reality then it means that everyone else is experiencing their own universe and if ev each and everyone is experiencing their own universe therefore no one exists apart from yourself if you didn't if you didn't get this one clear no one exists apart from yourself and all of these things of perceptions all of these physical experiences outward and everything is happening within you people half of the truth about what man is is unknown up to now by all the masters who have walked upon this planet this planet 
by all the religious texts by all teachers you have known no one has really known what man is because when i say no one ex exists but yourself is because everyone here feeling the presence of every the the participation of every one of us in this circle here you brought them you created them to your reality that's why you are experiencing them you know there is a grander reason why the bible says says eh? ye are gods man is that real another story this is what they say they say man they say man is a lucifer is what man is and uh, at the same time they say the story of man the story of fallen angels that fallen angel which is supposed to be rising is man and uh, there is another Pleiadian story eh, of the extra territories. Eh? They say that uh, man, man has feminine and masculine aspects. Man, the feminine aspect of man is that which eh, we call as nephilim the fallen angels is the feminine part of man that is the star mother races of humanity race of this planet the star mothers of humanity is the nephilim so and the grander truth is that they are it is all a soup of everything discovering itself as creation as existence as being because uh, there is a push and pull like darkness and light like whatever we are experiencing is like man is being suppressed not to just have that one thing which is called the knowing it does not need any dramas any doctrines any ten commandments any tides any going for hajj in madina or Makkah or doing this and that and different it does not need any it just needs the knowing know thyself no you know the knowing eh knowing i always say that knowing surpasses surpasses uh, faith or belief I can or i can put it in a simpler words that faith and belief are outdated what works what is firm is the knowing because what you know let me tell you one thing what you know no one can convince you otherwise this is the sad thing about belief or faith my friend you can be a muslim and a stunt one and someone can come and change your mind and you become a christian and again someone can come and can change your can change your belief and you don't believe in any religion that is what faith is that's why i've been a muslim i've been a christian and i don't want religion but religion is one with me because everything is god the reason why we are not coming to the remembrance or the knowing you know there is this aspect and when when uh, where god says my people perish because of lack of knowledge it's the lack of the knowing and this is what the knowing is knowing knowing is you just coming to the realization becoming still be still and just know 
you just have to be still just be still the secret of finding your true self people it doesn't need any dramas it's just this is the most critical bible verse which has been ignored big time be still and just no nothing else bishop let me tell you one thing there is no dramas there is nothing you just be you just need to be still and no only that be still and no knowing what don't even focus on knowing anything be still and just no be in the state of knowing when they say knowledge is light eh? yeah, people you know, people these guys they they give you religions and they give you uh, sayings and uh, slangs in your in plain sight although they they sometimes mislead you but they show you hey we are misleading you but they, here is the truth and they give you those mottos that uh, knowledge is light and the truth is that when you just be in the state of the knowing you become in the state of the truth your divine self knowledge is light knowledge is information in knowing being in the state of all knowing the state of all knowing is that state which jesus was when he said he proclaimed that i and the father are one i and the father are one the state of the all knowing just be and know and be still and just know sometimes it will need some uh, it will need some uh, some activation and this activation is always that simplest thing that intent intent is something we are practicing in each and every aspect of our lives each and every aspect of our lives before you do anything first which comes forth it is always the pure intent before even you move your body your leg from one position to another one what comes forth is always the intent before you speak the other word before this one that gap which is between each word before coming of the other word there is always an intent of that another word you are in the continuous divine process like a flow a divine flow process of creation that's what the universe is intent every gap even when you breathe in that gap before you breathe out that is intent you create that you create that you bring in what is good remove what is of a exhaustion Be between every gap even when we walk between that empty space there is there is something called intent and people do not know what this intent is hey, people ye are gods and the greatest breaking news is that you are creating everything everything whatever you are going to do the next each and every moment you are creating in real time Either you like it or not because as it has already been said that ye are gods it shall be so and it is that so depends upon you 
what is that which you want to bring forth to the experience what is that which you want to give the god in you what is that experience which you want the god in you to experience through you as itself do you want to create to create negative experiences welcome be my guest you will create them and god is going to just be there in awareness without judgment just experiencing itself through you in that experience as itself without judgment because all the negative all the positive all the darkness all the light all the good or the all the evil all are within god within himself without judgment because they are all within himself nothing exists outside of himself i create the darkness and i create the light i i bring the good and i bring the darkness i and then he proclaim i i the i the i within you i the lord does them all they are no demons eh let me tell you one thing people should stop should wake up people we should uh, grow and become to the maturity of what spirituality is Salim. yes i'm sure sheila has like five demon pets that she has names for so, so if it's not true sheila right now <laughs> like in your mind is in your child self <laughs> you interrupted him to talk about that because that is talking to spiritual babies eh? people have been dark you know we should say listen <laughs> john no then eh? this is what i was saying man has never man has never known who he is scientists up to now they are what they're saying that they are this uh, uh, dna strands and the others they are, there is something they call the junk dna it is a mystery it is a mystery we have never known who we are it it just takes the knowing just you first taking that pure intent as i said it is the first pure intent in the beginning the word was with god do you know what in the beginning the intent was with god and the intent was god and that intent manifested into reality into physicality into matter into material nothing comes into form before first coming forth intent in the beginning there was the word the word was was with god and the word was god and the word manifested into flesh into matter physical physical material in the beginning the word was not jesus i tell people the whole story about jesus in the bible was never about jesus it was about the christ in jesus because jesus did not become the christ it was the christ that became jesus and jesus had a rough time and he knew these guys they were just focused on the jesus the physical jesus people the jesus who walked was human was form was of matter matter is what 
cometh from the earth. Salim. Yes. I don't know if you have this download, but Jesus actually uh, came to Kikuyu land to be taught about spirituality. So there are some discussions we may have later and start correcting that narrative right away. That one I can correct you right now. Jesus. Okay. Let me tell you. You can have any revelation about Jesus. And this is one thing. Jesus, when 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 you you have put this symbol of Jesus, eh? Or the Jesus, the Christ in Jesus, with that Jesus as a symbol, when you you put that symbol of something of motivation and something to guide you, let me tell you, manifestations will come in accordance to your level of vibration and your level of vibration is always connected to your area of locality you can experience jesus the black jesus you can experience a hindu jesus you can experience a a white jesus you can experience a everything jesus Th that is if you experience him coming to your maybe he, he was taught spirituality in your kikuyu line bro it is true presented to you in accordance in accordance to how you are vibrating in resonance to the vibrations and the energies of your locality of your nationality of your region is what is presented to you so jesus knew that these guys they are stuck into physicality they are looking at the me jesus the flesh the matter and the whole story is not about me and that's why he asked his disciples whom do you say i am and they failed him you are the teacher you are the prophet what do people say outside i am they were they were they were just fixed in that physical jesus that's why they said they said ah some of them they say you are elijah the prophet some of them some of them say you are john the baptist blah blah but they never saw what was that which was present that which could not be seen behind Jesus, within Jesus, that which could not be seen and yet present. And yet present the spirit of God, which was in every man. That's why Jesus said, the works that I do, you guys, you can do greater than this. The works that I can do, you guys, you can do better than this. These are the things which my my brother here bishop is saying the things of flying and levitating and everything walking on water calming the storms let me tell you one thing when when jesus was the fisher we were, was with the fishermen and he slept what came forth it was the storm do you know why we are experiencing storms? It's because the Christ within us has slept. We have put the Christ within us into slumber. What do you experience? Storms outside of ourselves. What do we do now? Wake up the Christ within. And if the Christ within wakes up, shall just raise, rise above all and shall quench the storms and this is a one thing eh? one thing eh? we that intent itself it was christ we have to have that pure to just to have that pure intent that christ awakens the first thing we learn is to meditate like comes you see now when the Christ comes forth, eh? he takes charge and the storms quell outside all the 
what comes is calmness. This Christ cannot be woken up by singing to it. This Christ within cannot be woken up by praising it. Let me tell you one thing. God, God lacks nothing. Because God is, the, is in the state of completeness. He lacks nothing. He doesn't need any praises. Praises, take them to your politicians. They are seeking for votes. But God lacks nothing. Either you praise him, either you exalt him or not, he remains to be God. And he doesn't need your belief because it is, if you can take it, take it. And Jesus, when they came seeking for, the, for Jesus, this is what Jesus told them. Hey, why are you seeking the living among the dead? So very clearly he told them, hey guys, you are seeking the ever living eternal Christ in the physical Jesus seeking the living among the dead and that is the reason why up to now they are waiting for the Jesus which is to come not knowing that bad 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 news the Jesus, the Christ has already come. It's the Christ consciousness. And let me tell you one thing. The Christ never left at all. At all. And this is, either you like it or not, the Christ never left. Jesus died, but even that Christ never even left. It remained here. The reason why Jesus said, that time when comes when you, you tell people, I was sick, you never visited me. I was naked, you never shattered me. I was homeless, you never. I was naked, you never, you never clothed me. It's because he never, the Christ never left. The Christ is here with you. The Christ is that homeless guy you are passing with your car. The Christ is that are those sick people in the hospital those who have no people they just they were found somewhere and they were taken to hospital no one to visit them they, that christ is that neighbor's kid who walks barefooted christ never left What people are waiting for is already here. The kingdom is already here and it was and it shall be. Because the universe is what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God cannot be attained. Let me tell you guys, cannot be attained, can only be realized, knowing. How do you know, how will you know this kingdom of God? By knowing that in the beginning, there was God and everything else came from God and all that to each and everything is within God. Nothing exists outside of God. All is within the light, the darkness, all is within. Your work is to bring these parts together in balance. To bring the darkness and the light in balance. People, Markaba, the upper and the below, the feminine and the and the masculine. The darkness and the light merging them spinning them in opposite direction but bringing them into resonance sacred geometry
kingdom can only be realized how do you realize it is very simple people you want to walk on water you want to heal people it is very very simple people it is very simple just come to the realization a very simple process these are the things which our kids were supposed to be taught while in, in their nursery level what you say is true because the other day I had a backache and I told it to go and it went this is the secret this is the secret behind it eh? this is the secret behind it all what is presented in your reality I told you guys there is no demons there is no what there is nothing all is God people approach everything with one perception all is God no matter how crazy a situation is no matter how crazy a person is no matter how evil a situation is no matter how evil a person is just approach to them approach them with the perception that all is God and yours is to claim just when this when when a crazy situation is presented in your reality and you are experiencing it you claim the divine out in, behind that darkness you claim the love out of that darkness because in the beginning eh, there was love then the love took two parts light and darkness i create the good and the create the, the evil i create the light and i create the the darkness i the i lord does them all so in the beginning there was love nothing else and in the whole universe nothing exists people listen to me very careful there is nothing existing in this universe apart from love nothing nothing people to embrace the devil you have to have the love of the devil to embrace darkness you have to love to have the love of the darkness to embrace sin you have to have the love to buy something you have to see the beauty in them beauty is a physical perception of love in the mental state it is what is called perception in the mental state in the mind it is called consciousness in our mind it is called consciousness through our heart it is known as love and through our physical reality it is known as beauty you can never buy anything without you first coming to the realization and the knowing of the beauty of that you can never buy anything to the lightest even if i give you the two simplest two match boxes you will always buy the one which you see beauty in that that is love nothing exists in the universe apart from love that and the universe is what god is that's why we are told god is love this energy of love moves in all directions without judgment because love is not biased it expects nothing it has no desires it is in the state of completeness everything is itself just realization claiming the divine in that negative situation and when you claim the divine people this is not a hearsay i'm telling you 
things you can practice them you tell me in any situation in any negative person or any evil person in any evil situation claim the divine that i claim the divine in this it is a negative i acknowledge this but i know behind this darkness is love and i claim for you you don't see what is you know people do not get stuck into physicality these crazy situations these evil people the evil people we are perceiving them with our physical senses physicality there is that which is behind that do not get stuck into physicality know that behind that darkness there is that which cannot be seen by your physical senses and yet presence very present when you you claim upon it this is either you like it or not when you claim the divine you have claimed the love you have claimed god hey let me tell you any negative situation is not above god When you claim the divine, you have claimed love out of that. You have claimed God out of that. And God will always show up. That love will always show up. That divine will always show up. That is how situations are turned into opportunities. Claiming the divine and the divine rising up. People whosoever whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved when you claim the divine in a negative situation you have claimed god god shall rise never fail you it is a promise whosoever whosoever because the Christ within is not identified by anything of your physical reality. It is just in the state of awareness, experiencing that through you as itself. Where you take it, it goes. Where you project something negative, you bring that. Hey, all the woes, everything is where we, where you focus is where your energy goes. Where you project your thoughts is where you are. You, when you, what you project in your thought, your thought form and your emotional body is, you have directed that Christ, that direction. So when you call that divine in that negative situation, it rises up. You experience the love. You experience God. The only simple reason why everything works out for the highest good, for those who believe in God. The only reason why everything, underline this word, the only reason why everything, underline in capital letters, everything works out for the highest good for those who believe in God, it is because that word you have underlined it is because everything is god people everything is god negative people negative situation uh, those which you think are demonic situations evil situations evil people everything is god you only need to be still and know and when you are in still in the state of stillness when a situation is presented to you you never judge it you don't give it judgment you don't give it identity because immediately you place judgment on it you will give it an identity and immediately you give it an identity it becomes that because ye are gods situations present themselves to us in a neutral state we are creators people 
scriptures are full of bullshit but i'm telling you they are grander truths ye are gods and there is no separation between you and each and every other thing any other religion any other scriptures because all is god immediately you deny one thing a single thing anything anything people <laughs> immediately you deny anything you have denied god you have denied the divine you have separated god god is not in the state of separation god is holiness anything people anything hey. People, I'm seeing people going around, oh, anti-vaccination, anti -vaccination, anti vaccination and this is what I told them. People, you are not going to win that war with that crude spiritual mentality. Rudimental form of human existence. Getting stuck into physicality. You are just getting stuck to the jobs, people. Everything works out for the highest good for those who believe in God because everything is God. Even the vaccines, they are God. We could turn this situation to our highest good as a human collective and will serve the grandest purpose. We are here to practice creation. Man is a mystery. He, man has never been defined. People, don't forget this. No one has ever defined what man is. And the greatest irony, the greatest irony, the greatest irony is that neither have they fully de define and described who God is. So when ye when ye are told that ye are God's people, man himself has never been defined in totality even by the angelic